lot of you guys don't know this. Uh, one of my favorite things on planet Earth is to sh on people's top tens and their tier list. And today we have the kings of making absolute dog content. We have Watch Mojo. We have Watch Mojo weighing in on Honkai Star Rail meta. Now, I mean this genuinely. Who in the f thinks, you know what? I need meta advice. <laughs> What's Watch Mojo saying about Silverwolf? <laughs> you know, like okay, let me let, let's just let's just watch. Whatever, let's get this over with. The Anti Matter Legion, interesting. Okay. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the units at the. Okay, Ricky Tucci. I'm gonna pull up his Instagram. Why is Bro the one making this list? Ricky Tucci. Why is this the guy? making this video i feel like this shit is just wild to me he's dude the problem is he's he's way too hot to be making a video on gotcha games i mean he, bro looks like the giga chad he's a chad clearly okay let's okay okay ricky get him man the very top of the current meta in honkai star rail all right number 10 kafka okay She made it on the list, and that makes me happy. Listen, I love Kafka. I understand that she sucks. I get it. I get that Kafka sucks. So this is fine. Anyone who says lightning never strikes the same place twice has clearly never met Kafka. While her damage output looks underwhelming at first, the initial hit is only part of the story. You see? Yeah. Yeah, you see? You see Ricky gets it. You see 1.4K, but you don't see the 40K dot tick right after. Okay, see, Ricky gets it, bro. R Ricky's one of the boys, man. Kafka is the queen of the long game. Most of her skills apply the game-changing shock debuff, causing electrifying amounts of damage over time. Once you land a hit, all you have to do is sit back, relax, and watch as enemies fry. Bro hits for 5.5K and says, watch as Kafka fries enemies. That is crazy. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage. I around her. It's a sight to behold. In fact, Kafka's consistent access to status effects makes her one of the most reliable damage dealers in the whole cast. Shocking. It's that's just simply not true. Isn't it? <laughs> Number nine, yeah. Fu Xuan. Fu Xuan only at nine is crazy to me. I feel like she's so f***ing broken. It's insane. I would put Fu Xuan probably in top three, if not easily top five. Nine is crazy. If they put Luocha above Fu Xuan, they're just wrong and they don't know what they're talking about. Daylight. There's one very good reason to always keep Fu Xuan on your team. To put it simply, this girl does not die. Thanks to her litany of regenerative abilities, right. she can keep herself on the battlefield through just- Did you just show litany of abilities and you use the abundance special ability in simulated universe because you thought it was Fu Swans? Oh my god. I'm gonna be- I'm gonna be sick. This video is AI generated. It- it literally has to be AI generated. Just about any attack. And even better, she can do the same with her team. Fu Xuan's unique skill allows her to partly shield her ally's damage intake for three turns. Pair that with her insane uh -huh. healing and Fu Xuan's- Her healing actually sucks. It is not insane healing. It's terrible. Okay, she is majorly metagation. This party becomes not- Wait, what do you mean one- How the f*** do you have 1,000 crit damage? What the f*** is that? I didn't even- what? Bro, and they're just hacking the game and they're just posting it on main, bro? They're gonna get banned. 1,000 crit damage? God damn, bro. Nice damage intake for three turns. Pair that with her insane healing and Fushuan's party becomes nigh unkillable. Oh, and did we mention Fushuan's- Admit you have no idea what nigh unkillable means. Also, humans don't talk like that. Kill also boosts her teammates' critical rate. Bro hit for 7.13 million with Fu Xuan, and he probably thinks, yeah, that's normal. 7.13 mil. This, this is the type of guy, this is the type of AI script 
where it's going to be like, yeah, the number one character has to be Silver Wolf because she always makes sure you're using the right element. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Bro. I, I, no, I called that now. I called that now. Silver Wolf must be the best character. Clearly, she doesn't just support your lineup. She's the... Also, if Kafka hit for 5.5K and he just saw Fu Xuan hit for 7.1 million, how in the... Does he think that Kafka's good? Reason it's effective. If Zila is on this list at all, I might close it. At all. The cycle. When you kill someone, they get to go again. The yin and yang never cease. Number eight. <laughs> oh my god, bro. This shit is just crazy to me. Watch Ting Yun, Asta, Pela all not be on the list. Oh my god. Just he's gonna say she's strong because you can kill somebody and then go again. Sila. Got a lot of nerve. Yep. In comparison to flashy skills, debuff mechanics, and situational ultimates, Sila is pretty straightforward. She simply does damage and a lot of it. However, in a game like Honkai Star Rail, uh -huh. that alone wouldn't be enough to make her stand out. But is it because when she kills people, you get to go again? Especially since she's limited to single targets. But that's where Sila's uber-powerful talent, Resurgence, comes into play. Whenever she eliminates an enemy, Resurgence buffs her attack and lets her act again. Man, that's uber. That's uber powerful. Oh my god, bro. Pre-watched? You couldn't pay me to watch this video twice. Let alone suffer through this bullshit once. You think I'm gonna pre-watch a Watch Mojo video? That's insanity to me. Guys, obviously, I wrote the script. Going again? That's uber powerful. Essentially, she has the attack stat of a single target master, but the versatility to plow through hordes at the same time. 2.3k damage! So, whether you're chipping away at a boss or grinding through grunts, Sela always deserves a spot on your team. Disappear. What the f*** was that B-roll of Zila just getting shit on by Kafka? On the sea of butterflies. Collisions of the past! Number 7. Blade. I think that is incredibly fair. I think they accidentally got one right. I I do think they accidentally got one right. My sword will be the last thing you see. Also, I am heavily considering rolling for Blade. I'm going to just keep it 100%. I am heavily considering rolling for Blade. The only reason why I might not roll for Blade is because I'm already getting wind when I get Black Swan. Given his name, it's only fitting Blade is the epitome of a glass cannon. He's got some of the best win skills in the whole game, but they come at a high cost. Namely, his health bar. Yep. While trading damage for damage sounds risky, it's circumvented by the fact that Blade- Wait, did he just say glass cannon? Wait. Then you see. Given his name, it's only fitting Blade is the epitome of a glass cannon. Oh my god. Bro, he's like one of the tankiest units in the entire game. This is one of the dumbest mother- I've ever seen in my whole life. Bro, Blade, Blade is borderline unkillable in game, even more so in lore. What in the f is bro talking about? He's got some of the best win skills in the whole game, but they come at a high cost, namely his health bar. While trading damage for damage sounds risky, it's circumvented by the fact that Blade doesn't start fights. He ends them, but even mean what the f does that even mean this is the, this is the beta this isn't even on live like where the f are you getting this footage from this video came out like two days ago what the f does that mean bro is just making shit up bro is theory crafted with schizophrenic demons in his mind like he doesn't start fight he ends them okay i guess as an extra precaution his ultimate has a built-in failsafe too the ironically titled Death Sentence always restores Blade to half health, whether he's above or below the threshold. Then, it takes all the damage he's taken in the whole match and converts it into one explosive finishing blow. With that kind of firepower... I like how he said finishing blow. Blow. 
and he can't even kill these two little bird mobs. <laughs> that's that's what's crazy to me. All right, let me get some explosive footage. 1,400 damage on two birds he doesn't kill. With that kind of firepower, who needs health anyways? Blade needs health because his damage scales on his HP. <laughs> He, he is throwing darts at the wall, hoping to God someone sticks. Uh, let's see. Uh, number six best character in the game. Who's he going to say? He's probably going to say Jing Yuan because he has a big lightning lord. If he says a hook, I close the video. Number six, Ting Yun. Okay, that's fair. He got lucky again. I bet he doesn't know why, though. I bet he doesn't know why, though. So Ting Yun's the best tank in the game. Why the f did you bring Ting Yun into a fight by herself? You get a buff. Why did you just ult yourself as Ting Yun? And you get a buff, you get a buff, and you get a buff. That's right, Ting Yun is all about those nice, powerful attack boosts. She's basically a walking, talking battery pack for your team, and with the right synergy, she can help even low level heroes clear the battlefield. What's more, Ting Yun has one of the most useful ultimates in the game in that it helps others to get their ultimates. And yes, Tin Yun's damage modifiers apply there too. It doesn't take a mathematician to see that attack- oh, Wait, did he actually say heroes? <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Buffs plus frequent ultimates yep. equal a must have for your team. After all, if you plan it right, Tin Yun can be the buffer that keeps on buffing. Okay. He got, he got Number one, five, right? Silver Wolf. Wow. Look at you go. Hey, boys. Okay. He didn't put Silver Wolf at number one. Good for him, man. He's gotten three in a row. Pretty close to being right. Look at that. I can do this in my sleep. Okay. Nothing howls quite as loud as good old-fashioned debuff. Entering Silver Wolf. She specializes in reducing all of an enemy's stats. And we do mean... No, hold up. All of them. Defense, speed, attack, you name it, Silver Wolf can do it. But that's still nothing compared to her unique skill. Using allow changes, Silver Wolf gives a foe an elemental weakness of one of her teammates' types. No other character in the whole game has that kind of mid-battle versatility. It's so flexible that honestly, Silver Wolf can slot into just about any team composition and still do well. At this point, there's really no excuse to leave her on the bench. <laughs> Come back in a century. I want to I want to ask can Silverwolf actually reduce every stat? I don't think that's true. Can she reduce HP? Does she have an HP debuff? Can she reduce effect resist? Can she reduce effect hit rate? Well, then she can't debuff every stat then. So he's wrong. Enemies don't have effect hit rate? Well, that's stupid. Does she have an HP debuff? No? Well, then he's wrong. Yeah, this this one he was he was kind of on the money for, but no he, yeah, she does. It's called damage. No, it's not the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. Stop being mean to chat DPT. You're right. Fine. I'll let him get a win. Okay. He accidentally got this one right. He's fine. Hey, good job, Tracy. Number four, Bronya. How is he doing this? He's doing a pretty good job. Branya is a wind type fighter following the path of harmony who leads her companions to victory in the name of the Amber. Now, I would argue that Bronya should be probably number two or number one because Bronya is insane. Lord, you don't even need to make a move to see why Bronya is worth joining the front lines. By activating her banner of command technique, every ally starts the next match with a passive attack buff. But when Bronya's actual turn comes around, she takes that idea to a whole new level. We're talking about dispelling debuffs, raising the whole team's damage output, and more. Okay. If that's not enough, whichever ally Branya targets immediately gets another turn too. Uh -huh. It's obvious that Branya is so- With the damage buff, you dumbass. So much more than your average support unit. If used correctly, she can control the flow of the entire game altogether. To guard and defend. Crush them! Yeah, I promise you, you attack buffing and crit buffing your Bronya by herself is not correct. If you put Jing Yuan above Bronya, I'm going to lose my mind. Number three, Locha. How the f 
because of the Wocha above Fushuan. Bro is insane. Luocha is very good. He is so much worse than Fushuan, it's insane. Let's hear what he says, though. Luocha and Fushuan should be swapped. Remember. I'll take, boys, I have them both. And they're both max kitted. Your oath. Let me tell you, let me tell you why Fushuan's better. With Fushuan, your entire team can never be one shot. What's better than being able to heal your team back to full, ensuring that they never have a chance of dying ever, right? Like, you cannot be one shot. It is insane. Her damage is also very good. She also makes you do more damage. Sh she's f nuts. Out among the stars, the undercurrent swells beneath the tide. Ironically, the best healer in Honkai is also one of the game's most powerful combatants. Fushuan's better. Lucha's supportability scale with his attack stat, giving him an incredibly rare niche as a unit that can both heal damage and dish it out. Let me tell you about Luocha builds, guys. You're going to need 90% crit rate, 300% crit damage, okay? I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm, he must have watched. He must have watched Larocha stream. He must have watched. He, he must have watched DPS DPS Larocha stream. Oh my God! Literally the dumbest shit I've ever heard. The best part? He can do it all in a single move. Once Lacha activates his signature skill, Prayer of the Abyss Flower, it will automatically replenish his allies' health when they take a certain amount of damage. No turn or suit. Dude, 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 bro saw 605 and thought, my god, bro is a hyper damage dealer. Amount of damage. Huge no damage. No turn or skill points needed. That frees up Lodja to focus on offense, and thanks to his aforementioned attack stat, that comes pretty naturally. <laughs> 1500 damage. Oh my god. Talk about getting the best. I like how he didn't even mention about the strip or cleanse. So the only parts of why people run Luocha are the auto heal and the strip and cleanse. And he mentioned nothing and said Luocha's a damage dealer. Bro is insane. Best of both worlds. To witness your promise. Yeah, I'll be real, bro. I got rid of my Jing Liu and I just started using Luocha, you know? And that freed me up a healer slot, too, because you can do them both. So I just run Luocha, Ting Yun, Bronya, and then Ruan Mei. I mean, I'm telling you, bro, if you haven't tried it, it's insane. Number two. Jing Liu. Who the f Don't put him Bibber Lune as number one. Oh my god. Jing Liu should be number one. Let's make that very clear. Jing Liu should be number one. If Jing Yuan or Bibber Lune is number one, oh my god. Watch him accidentally put Don Hung in. Inner self is purged. Ever since her release, Jing Liu has frozen her way at the very top of the competitive scene. And for good reason. With or without. Um, the competitive scene? At what? The HSR World Olympics? What the f is the competitive scene of Honkai Staro who can swipe their card the most? Without investment, her ice damage is simply unmatched. Especially when you take into account her signature talent, Crescent Transmigration. Each basic attack raises her level, and after just two strikes, Jing Liu no longer needs any skill points to unleash her devastating ice skills. To put that into perspective, her ultimate can dish out over 300% of her gargantuan attack stat onto a single enemy. So word of advice? Get Jing Liu while you can. There may never be a character as strong as her in a very, very long time. Black Swan will be better. And so I wield my blade to the very Please. end until the stars have been cut down from the sky. Before we continue, be sure to option no. to be and switch up Bibiter Lune. Shut the f up! You think Bibiter Lune is better than Jing Liu? Why? Because they can do the same damage with Don Hung using 22 skill points and Jing Liu using 5? Yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah, just use a million skill points and then they can do the same damage. The consequences are mine to bear. If you're looking for damage, you're in the right place. As its name implies, the Imbibitor Lune form is Dan Hung, but better in just about every conceivable way. Arguably, he's better than everyone else too. Thanks to his talent, Righteous Heart, Dan gets a slight damage buff with each individual hit of his basic this attack. Pisses me off. He can also stack skill points to increase the number of hits, ramping up the multiplier even more. Then, just to really sweeten the deal, Imbibitor Lune comes with unique passives that offset his high energy costs. Suffice it to say... Dude... 
do they? Do they? Does this he? This isn't Bible Lune's game, and everyone else is just living in it. Shut the f up. Collecting dragon. Where the f is Pela? Where the f is Asta? Bro, bro, just, just watch Mojo. Next time you think about making a Honkai Starro video, just don't. Good God, man, that shit actually pissed me the. F off how much shit they could get wrong in one video is insane to me like actually f insane to me like you have to be trying to be that f ignorant where was arlon guys <laughs> they tried their best hey good job tucker you made a fine video good job hey, mate. yo maybe ai is evolving guys